Hello, hello, YouTube. Testing, checking my levels real quick. Sounds pretty good. I'm gonna leave Conti on for a second. Uh, hey everyone, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. I decided I wouldn't stream during the break, after all, during Thanksgiving, that I'd take a couple days off of streaming. It felt like a long time, actually, since I've streamed now, because I haven't streamed since, like, last Tuesday or something. So that, was, that was almost a full week. So, it felt like a long time. I missed streaming. Glad to be back. Uh, I got some work done um, off-camera during the break, which was cool. I had a lot of food on Thanksgiving. Hope you guys did, too. I had barbecue. We went the non-traditional route, which was very tasty. Um... Yeah, it was cool. Hope you guys had a good one too. And uh, let me show you some of what I got done. Get rid of my Conti here. Let me get the Zelda and chill going. Cool, cool, cool. And there we go. So yeah, I got some of these animations done. In the middle there is the uh, spawn animation when he rolls out of the bee. This is the ball de veau. And uh, on the right is just a walking animation. And on the left is an idol with his head just kind of bobbing a little bit. I think they came out uh, reasonably well. And uh, I'm gonna keep working on some more for this guy today. I think at least I wanna do um, in the in the actual Mega Man game, one thing I noticed in uh, the original Mega Man X is that um, if you look at the reference here, uh, for example, he never actually attacks at all. He just walks towards Mega Man, and if he walks past you, obviously you take damage. And uh, if you shoot a small energy blast, just the little lemons, <laughs> it goes between the legs. But if you shoot any of the bigger blasts, it hits him and damages him. So, because because he doesn't have any attacks, I think it would be kind of boring in a first person shooter to have him just like not do anything, um, to just walk into you. So I think instead, Especially since you can move around so fast and everything, he'd be like a worthless kind of enemy, which maybe he kind of was, but <laughs> I'll make him a little more interesting. So I'm, I'm thinking about a couple different ideas for an attack. I'm thinking maybe like a headbutt, maybe like a kick, and um, uh, also since he's got this, uh, if I zoom in here for a second, since he's got this little, you know, this part, shuttle part, and he's got the glowy eye, I figure either one of those places could be good to have like a laser come out and he could do like a continuous laser that just shoots along the ground you know like you've seen probably in a lot of games like if you're looking at him at the side it would just go like out like this and then it would go forward a bit and then back and recede and he could just carve into the ground a little bit maybe like he could like track you while you're dashing and stuff and try to hit you with the beam I was thinking some things like that just something to make him a little more interesting because, uh, yeah, if he just walks into you, it's probably not going to be that cool. So, it kind of works in... I think it kind of works better in Super Nintendo. Makes more sense, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be animating that tonight. Some attacks. Going to see how that goes. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, or to just hang out and listen. Uh, make fun of me. Whatever you want to do. It's all good, it's all cool, and I'm gonna get started. So, this is my little presentation folder, or uh, file rather, where I just have these animations running. So I'm gonna close that, and then start in on this, uh, uh, this is like my base animation file, and actually I'm gonna save it as, um, uh, Maybe we'll do headbutt first, or laser. I'll try headbutt first, because I'll be able to show off a lot about how the rig works and stuff. I should put attack headbutt. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, so I think the last video I did, I was just working on this dude's rig in Auto Rig Pro. And so I did finally get it to work. And I did use the tail um, uh, uh, chains, which um, the reason why I like those for this guy is because I could make each section a separate bone for his legs. And um, the sort of winding works pretty well. Like if you grab this part and you just bend like this, it moves like this. And I think that's sort of interesting for his character and it works pretty well. So you could easily do like some kind of weird kick or even like you can do like this weird winding thing and maybe like sling out his leg or something. Um, so it could lead to some interesting attack animations. And uh, I just feel like for his thing, you know, winding up into a ball even, like in the other animation, I feel like this worked pretty well, this rig. SparkTFS says, good night there. Hey SparkTFS, good night to you too. Uh, or do you mean good night like you're heading out already? Sorry, I know I'm starting late tonight. If you are, I understand. <laughs> no worries. But yeah, hopefully you can hang out for a bit. Yeah, sorry. I'll be on earlier from now on. I just, uh, I let it, I just waited too long tonight. I got no excuse. Just lacking a little discipline <laughs> to get going on time tonight. But uh, yeah, tomorrow I'll probably start around 7, so it'll be much earlier. Uh, so, the only bad thing about this rig, which, because I'm, I like making use of the automatic controls and things that auto rig pro gives but because of that there's a few weird things one of the weird things is i can't just like lift up a foot it doesn't chain backwards for whatever reason so you have to kind of like work with the rig and um sort of when you're animating you kind of have to like if you want to move the feet like if you want to bend the head forward there's a control i can bend it a little bit with here and it'll bend at this last section here but outside of that, like if I want to bend his whole legs and have him bend forward, I have to kind of like, I'll show you a quick example of what I mean. So like I have to do this and then just select everything. Oops. And then uh, use the 3D cursor as the pivot and just kind of, not that though, uh, and just kind of situate him so that he's going forward and his feet are flat and put him back in the spot. So that's the only downside with working with this very odd kind of a rig. Um, but I think the benefits outweigh the, you know, little bit of janky animating time. So, and the other thing is I can't, yeah, so the reason I have to do that is because this just moves the whole rig. It doesn't like move his head and like bend the legs or anything because they're not really legs. They're supposed to be like tails basically. Uh, the way this is set up. So it was a trade-off, but I think it was the right choice for this particular rig. And it's not that big a deal. I got pretty used to animating him. So yeah. So I'm thinking like if he's walking and he steps forward and we're doing a headbutt. I'm trying to think, should both feet be centered and then he headbutts or should the one yeah I guess both feet centered and then he'll just headbutt makes sense like he just comes to a stop and then kind of rears back and maybe instead of just doing like a straight headbutt like like this he could kind of like swing back and then kind of to the side and then when he comes around like kind of like this or something um, that might be cool something like that to kind of utilize the springiness of his legs or maybe a more direct one would be better because that telegraphs it a lot. I definitely want to give him at least one laser attack too, so maybe we'll do, maybe we should do a kick instead. Maybe the headbutt's not that good because we, we could make use of this really interesting winding thing and then we could just have him go like, do something like this and then just like fling it out and just swing it. Like that could be really cool, potentially. So then you'd have to, how would you do that? I guess you could kind of extend it from here, 
just do section by section. And then you could do it like that. So he's just kind of swinging it at you. And his feet are pretty pointy looking. So maybe that could be cool. It's kind of dangerous looking feet. Or you could maybe even do something where he swings his foot back. And then when he winds up, he could bend it sharply here. Kind of like when he takes a step actually in his stepping animation. He bends his leg like this. And then when you swing it forward, when he swings it forward rather, he could like stick it out sharp like this. And it could be kind of like a stab, a uh, stabbing attack. Just have to un unwrap all these. And it could be straight, straight out like that and just come right at you. That actually might be the best move, I think. Uh, Spark says, the way this enemy can retract its legs and turn into a ball kind of reminds me of Samus. Oh yeah, it is kind of like Samus, kind of like the screw attack. Maybe we could do a screw attack. Would that be too much? This guy's kind of a slow walking, janky sort of dude. I don't know if a screw attack, that might be a little bit too um, acrobatic for him. Uh, Spark says, looks like he's getting ready to quick a ball while playing soccer right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I bet he'd be, he could be good at soccer. He could probably kick the ball pretty hard. Yeah, let me think. I think I like that idea of like a stabbing kick, but then we're not really utilizing the wind up as much, I think. Unless maybe if we did it around here like this, he could do like kind of like a scorpion stab maybe. I don't think his leg's long enough for that though, because you'd have to bend it here, right? And then start to unbend. Let me see if I... No, I don't think that's even feasible. It's just not long enough. Because then if you unbend all these, and then say you bend this one down. Oh, maybe. That's kind of interesting. It's sort of coming through the leg, though. It doesn't actually, well, I guess you could bend it here more. Here, let's see. This one. Yeah, you could do this, and then unbend that one, unbend that one, but no, it's still coming through the mesh, which I don't like. I could rotate it, probably, let's see. Oh yeah, you can. Hmm. Can you rotate the whole thing? Oh, you can. Oh, whoa, look how weird that is. <laughs> That's bizarre. Yeah, we gotta make use of some of that stuff since we have such a weird cool rig. All right, I'm, I'm gonna try doing something like this where he kind of like turns it out like that. And then can I turn this one out too? Will that help? The thing is I really need to get him past this thing so it doesn't just clip through the mesh because that's gonna look janky. Yeah, so if he can get to there and then all of this can still... Whoa. That is such a weird... That is, that is really cool. <laughs> I gotta, yeah, I gotta figure something out <laughs> where I can use this. Here, what does it do? Thing is, I wish it would stay. Uh, does it have its own axis that I can use? Not that one. Not that one. Man, that's really interesting. Oh, that one's kind of the one yeah but the thing is it's bending too so it bends it in a different direction which I don't want because if he could stick it out like that and then drill it that would be pretty neat all right let's undo all that let's start from the beginning Okay, let's see. So if he's gonna... Usually the way I've been doing this is just do it, separate everything, every kind of key by 10 frames, and then just space it out afterwards to the proper spacing. That just helps me stay organized. So if you, maybe we're gonna start with 
I'm swinging it back here. And then that would be one key. Uh, I should probably do select bones only. Just for the leg, just for everything that's moving. So now we've got this movement here from the start to back here. And then on the next 10, I'll start the wind up to bring it back forward, the scorpion thing. And I think I'm also gonna start rotating this. Uh, to avoid clipping that mesh. So if you're in front of him, it's gonna look like that. And then he'll just start bringing it forward uh, on the next one. Something like, this is where it's gonna get tricky. Bending the head would help too. Oops. Yeah, and so then this one's gonna bend. Actually. While we're at it, if this one's still that far not bent, let's just go much farther with that so we can bend this one less. Okay. The problem is it's clipping now, so this is gonna be a big keyframe. Is it because it's clipping? Is that why I need it out more? Yeah, because it needs more space to kind of get normal. I think I might just have to deal with that though. This one. Can I just do that? Yeah, okay, there we go. Let's see if this works. Looks like it might work. This part, this is where we're going to start unbending this leg now. Maybe not that one. And then, yeah, so now it's straightening out and shooting down. At, in theory, uh, Mega Man. And let's see here. So is there a way I can twist this without losing control completely? Yeah, <laughs> see it kind of almost works, but then it does kind of go crazy and change direction, which doesn't necessarily mean it won't work. We could fix that. Let's see. So if I, um, yeah, I want it to be as centered as possible. Like it's 
going towards the center. And then select all of these. So this might not, we might need some in-betweens to get this to work. Because it may just look super weird the way it's gonna change in between frames here. Okay, so now we're going from here. Oh yeah, that kind of works. So it's going from here to there. So all together like this. I don't like this like lag here though. Maybe this could be a little more fluid. So let's bring this forward. Yeah, because this part should be very snappy. In fact, what actually what I should do is let's just take the halfway point and put that back here as the keyframe for here instead. So now it's more fluid. But he doesn't have that wind up thing going on which I wanted, so maybe I can incorporate that here. It would have to be between these two. So let me just duplicate this keyframe. Let me see if I can do something like that. And have it make sense. So, have to be there we go. And at some point it should unfold. So now he'll go from there to there. See, I don't like that though. That's too much. Let's just do from there to like something like that. Or even a uh, And then between these ones, I want to do uh, I know what it's going to be. It's going to be if you take this all the way, and then it's going to unfurl. Whoa. Oh, because I'm selecting all the bones. It's doing something else. OK. So let me just select this bone. And then if we go all the way then it should I guess we'll just carry it through the loop then and see what that looks like it might not be what I was going for, but we're definitely uh, trying stuff with this animation.
just trying stuff. Just experimenting. So then he's gonna go from here to here to here and then move these out again. And then maybe we could get it to fan out again. Oh, why is it angled though? Oh, I know why, because of all the other bones. And then it'll go forward like that. So it does this winding thing. Yeah, I don't think it's good. <laughs> I think the winding thing is, as much as I'd like to include it, I feel like it's just unnecessary. And it's not working quite right, right yet anyway. But uh, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work out. So let me just get rid of those frames. It's okay, it was worth trying. So for now, he's just going like this, and then Scorpion. That's not how I had him before that. Did I delete something out of that I shouldn't have? I think that middle frame there I need. Get rid of these ones. Was it this one? Okay, I know what it needs. I want to let's see. Oh, maybe I need that. So I want to bring it up like that. It seems like it got messed up somehow. Because I do want to bring it up like that, but then I want it to strike. Like I want it to do a separate thing. Yeah, okay, I think I know. Let's just start from the beginning. Now that I know what I want. Okay, so let's move 10 out, bring it up here, angle down, and then I want it to straighten out. Okay, so let's do, grab all these to key them. Okay, and I like that angle that it's at. And then this is where, oops, wait a minute. Oh, I see, we were, we had some hidden keyframes. Let's get rid of those. All right, so now that we've keyed those, and I like this angle, uh oh, actually, I need to adjust it slightly. 
before the overlap. Okay, that should be good. And then actually, yeah, that's probably fine. So grab all those again and key them again. Oops, not that one. And then on the next frame, we're going to have it rear back a little bit like a scorpion tail. And then it's going to come forward. But from what part do I want it to rear back? I kind of want it to... Let me think about that movement for a second. Oh, Darth Hylian says, Greetings, fellow homo sapiens. You don't have a Mega Man playlist to listen to while making this? Mega Man music is amazing yes it is amazing but um, I need to make sure that my uh, music isn't gonna get my um, video struck and uh, there was a couple copyright free uh, mixes that I listened to that said that they were copyright free and then I st it still got struck so the reason I'm sticking with game chops for right now is because I know all their stuff is uh, is copyright free I think they do have a couple Mega Man ones um, I didn't like it as much as their Zelda ones, though, and they didn't have any Mega Man X ones, which are sort of my favorite. But, uh, yeah, I'll look for more music in the future, for sure. I just need to... I don't know how to verify that it's not going to get my uh, video taken down beforehand. That's the only problem. Game Chops, I know they have a thing that says all their music is safe, so... That's why I stick with them so far. Yeah, just for now. I'll definitely find some more stuff, though. Yeah, hopefully people aren't tired of the Zelda and Chill Trilogy yet. <laughs> I know I play it every stream, so maybe you are. It'd be totally understandable. Yeah, I gotta find some new music. I gotta write that on my whiteboard. I wonder if there's a way I can test it. I'll have to find out. Uh, anyway, so I'm trying to think. Because I know if a scorpion's rearing back, I feel like it'll mostly be like this top section that'll unfold a bit. Like, it might just be even, like, here. And then I want the... Oops. And then I want the tippy top to kind of stay... Oh, no. I know what it is, I think. It's the bottom section. Because then the top section will straighten out and aim towards the enemy and maintain that. Uh, kind of like it's aiming at them. So, actually, let me put a marker where the tip is. And then I can bend these down more to compensate for the other parts unbending for the rear back. So it's still kind of pointing in the same direction. Oh, and it could be almost like, I kind of see what the motion is now. It's like gonna be rolling up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's good. Let me key that real quick. So it's going to go from this and then rear back a bit and then forward. But I want to push that a little bit more. So let me see if I can roll these ones as well. And use these ones too. Yeah, just like it's straining out almost to the tip. And then those last three can kind of pull it back like this. Is that right? We'll see.
and it'll go forward and strike. So up, back, maybe that's too far back. Maybe it only needs to go like that far and rotate this down a little. here and then have it really straighten out though and do the strike or should it just yeah yeah let me put it on a different key and it'll probably blend them and that'll probably work so we're gonna bend a lot here a lot here and yeah we'll probably make it like a little easing a little bit more easing than it was before about right and then this one's going to be important because this one's going to basically determine what direction it's actually going and we'll stretch that out center basically right about there oh and then to exaggerate that more actually we can even uh, bend the head forward and start bending this leg a bit Now you'll see what I was talking about, where you kind of have to rotate the whole thing. So probably not that much. We'll probably do it like this much. And then it'll straighten out a little. You'll see what I'm getting at here in a second. If you're confused, don't worry. So from here, let's see where it moves. A tip. Okay, so we want to get rid of... Put that back where it was. And now he's really digging into him. That's much more exaggerated. That's a lot better. And it gives it a lot more distance as well. So that's all good stuff. Can raise it up a little bit now too, actually. Because your height is probably going to be something like that. Okay. You can always go back and adjust that if need be. Also, if I find out in game it's not hitting in the right place, it's easy to re import an animation and update it in uh, Unreal, so it's not a big deal. That looks pretty good though for that keyframe. Okay, so now he's going from this to this, which feels pretty good. We could probably make that a little sharper. 
Let's see if I move that keyframe back a bit. Oh, well, I want to go to the middle. Oh, because that's five. Uh, try right there then. Yeah, that feels pretty snappy. Maybe even less. Maybe just like a, fr a couple frames, just like two frames. Because he's running back first, right? So he's going from. Okay, so one other thing is if he's going to rear back, if he's going to come forward with his whole body, he should probably rear back with his whole body. So I'm going to push that back a little bit too. Darth Hellion says, I should at least play the beginning of Mega Man X so I can compare it to what you've been doing. Oh, you haven't played Mega Man X? Oh, I think we talked about that. Maybe. Maybe it was you. Maybe it was someone else. Yeah, it's a great game. It's, it's like a... It's, kind of a perfectly designed game, or as close to perfectly designed as it gets. Uh, they really hit their stride with that game. They kind of improved on Mega Man, which was already a really good title. And uh, yeah, it's it's excellent. Uh, Mega Man X is a great game, especially if you like side-scrollers. It's, it's really phenomenal. Okay, so let's make this whole leg kind of, or the whole body rather, rear back like I was talking about. Since now we have the whole body rearing forward for the attack only makes sense. Uh, let me do this first. A little bit that. That'll probably handle the whole thing actually. Probably don't need to rotate the head independently. And the foot is still on that marker. So in a paste. I'm going to use this as a uh, pivot. And I'm just going to get it right there. Back to where it was. Something like that. And now the only thing is this leg. Oop. This leg needs to rotate more now in order to compensate for all of that movement. And I think I can do that just by Nah, it's gonna be difficult. See, I don't want to curl it more, I just want to rotate it. It's funny, because if I do the whole body, it'll do that. Is it because of this, maybe? Oh, it was, okay. Probably, yeah, just recycle the keyframes to bring it back. That'll probably work pretty well. That's just five. So maybe it could stop here, and depending, it could maybe, you know, repeat the attack. Okay, it could go, and then do it a couple times if you're like in the same place. And then as you move, it can revert back to its original position. So we'll move that out here to... I think I am going by increments of 5 now for some reason. 24 to uh, 
29. Oh, that's the same thing. It's this one that I wanted though. Now one little change that I'm gonna make is I don't like how his foot's clipping through the floor when he brings his leg back, so I'm gonna make an adjustment for that. So, just right here. Oops, get rid of that pivot. Just bring this forward a little bit and curl this so that his foot doesn't clip through the floor. I'll just add two of these right off the bat, probably. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Wait. this one it's a little fast but uh, let me see here am I doing 30 frames per second yeah 30 frames per second okay so let me just stretch this out a little bit do I want to stretch the whole thing though how's the pacing on the whole thing it's kind of like yeah, I think I want to stretch the whole thing. It's a little fast. So I'm going to stretch that maybe like 10 frames. Yeah, that feels pretty good. The only thing is something about the way this goes. Like I want this leg to curl up first. Oh, I know why. It's because of those frames. Okay. So... It starts moving back too early because those are separate frames. So I need to adjust that to make sure that uh, this uh, stays. That's the other leg, that's why, okay, okay. So it's this whole thing. So if I roll that back to here, and then what was it again? Frame 13. So at frame 13, I wanna do a keyframe there where it's still like that and the whole rotation should still be right here so if I roll back to 13 and then hit control V 
me move this one. Let me move this one. Because I just don't want that to start before the rest of it pulls back. I want that to all start on the same frame. You'll see what I mean. Right now. So yeah, now it's gonna go up, then pull back together, then push forward, and return. Yeah, that's more like what I wanted. There may be a little too much lag there though, between when the leg comes up Like actually, maybe you could start like... Maybe that could be the start pose. So it does pull back a little bit. Just to give it a little more interest. Something like that, is that more fluid? as opposed to Yeah, I do like that better actually. pretty good could maybe even be I think the beginning parts good but maybe this part could be a little bit slower Pretty vicious. That looks cool. Not bad. I still feel like that return is a little fast. Why does it feel fast? Oh, and also he's, he's uh, his leg is his foot is clipping again, so I gotta fix that. But this, can I just stretch it out more? Is that what it needs? I can stretch this out to fifty. I don't know, sixty. Yeah, that feels better. And then fix the clipping real quick. right here oops get rid of that pivot point let that leg curl up right there So now it's gonna go like this. Yeah, that feels better. So it's not clipping the floor. Right. 
and maybe the head should write itself early. Like the head should probably be finished moving right here. And then that'll probably look more natural. Because then the head is leading the movement. Yeah, there we go. Very nice, not bad. I think the whole thing could be still a teeny bit slower. Still a teeny bit fast, I think, because it's running at 30 frames per second. So let's go maybe right there. Because that's about what it's going to look like in real time. You can always adjust the speed later in Unreal Engine 2, which is a really cool feature. But um, it's good to kind of try to get your pacing what you want it to be when you're animating, for sure. And in fact, maybe that rear back is a little slow. I feel like you should snap into that maybe a little bit more. And that starts at frame 13. And it goes till... Or maybe it's just the interpolation. I think from here to here... Maybe ease in. Yeah, that feels better. Because then it snaps out. And it's slower to, to begin, but it really does snap out more. It's much better, I think. Okay, so maybe that's one attack down. Not bad. Not bad for one hour. Darth Hylian says, looks pretty solid, nice momentum, thanks. Yeah, I I've found that so far what I've been discovering, because I've been looking through, um, like when I do the walk cycles and stuff, if you've heard of the book, uh, The Animator's Survival Kit by Richard, Richard Williams, I was going to say Richard Schmidt, <laughs> he's a painter, not an animator, but yeah, R uh, Richard Williams did The Animator's Survival Kit. And that's a great reference book if you're animating, because it has like, it'll you can look up a walk cycle or a run cycle, and you can really see how he's thinking about his keyframes, and how if you're gonna have a character move really far forward on one frame, then he should prepare for that by moving really far backward the other frame. Or if you're having him dip down on his um, passing frame, then he should, you know, rise up on his, uh, or no, rather the opposite. If he's rising up on the passing frame, he should dip down when the legs are coming apart. So it has that opposite thing, because that uh, just enhances the motion. So yeah, if you're gonna have him spring forward really fast, it makes sense to give him a little wind up for that. That wind up really sells the movement. Yeah, counterbalance, yeah, basically that's the idea. Yeah, I highly recommend that book, though. I think it's a little pricey. It might be like... How much is that book? I have it right here. I'm curious. It's probably a price tag on it. I remember it being expensive. I bought it when I was in college. Uh, oh, it's not that bad. It's 35 bucks. I thought it was 50. Yeah, so it's uh, 35 bucks. The Animator Survival Kit by Richard Williams. It's a great reference for you know walk cycles, run cycles, lots of basic character movement, and just for studying kind of the principles of animation in general. He does a video course too. I got to watch that in class when I was in college. It was really cool. We went over that a lot. So if we want to make a proper loop out of it, well, I guess you can have some still frames at the end. That's fine. It doesn't need to perfectly loop. Yeah, it's okay. 
and then see that in the rendered view. Darth Hylian says you should do the attack animation yourself in real life and reference it. <laughs> yeah, in mo and yeah, in a lot of cases, in, in humanoid cases, I think this one would be a little hard to do. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> I'd have to be a hell of a gymnast to be able to do that with my legs. I think. But yeah, it's always a good idea to uh, have reference like that. You'll see all those videos of animators like acting stuff out in their studio. It's funny. I have faith in you. <laughs> Thanks, Darth Alien. That would be a great stream. Just me trying to do that for like an hour. That would be uh, hilarious. I'd, I'd break my back. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alrighty. Maybe I could do... I think the laser animation will be really fast, so maybe I could do that one too tonight. Let's just see if we do that real quick. So I'm going to save this one. I'm going to open up my base again. Animation base. And then I'm going to save it as uh, la attack laser. Cool. And we'll see how this goes. So for the laser, it's going to be pretty straightforward. I basically just want him to kind of bend forward a bit, and then he'll shoot the laser out either of his... I'm trying to think, what would be the better way to do it? His eye or his mouth thing here? Because if the only thing is I can't animate these. Like if I could maybe open them up and reveal a cannon, that would be cool, but they're definitely not. Uh, I would have to completely change this match. These are all janky. Um, it would look cool though. If it just reveals some emitter, but I can always use the eye. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the shape kind of lends itself to like the shape that the laser would be moving anyway. So that would be kind of cool. Hmm, I wonder if there's a easy solution for that that I could do. I'm trying to think. I could do something where the textures of the panels just start glowing. As if they are the emitters themselves. Then that would suggest that all these other gold parts are emitters too. Yeah, I don't know about that. Mm. I'll probably just stick to the eye. I think that's okay. Uh, yeah. So if that's the idea, let's really quickly create something to be an analog for the laser. Uh, so that I can kind of get an idea of where it's going to be hitting the ground as I'm animating this. Where's that center?
I mean in reality it is angled slightly down so I guess we could start it at kind of an angle here something like that and then let's just to active Let's just leave it long and parent that to uh, probably this bone, I'm thinking, and then it'll rotate with the head, but will that be the right pivot point? That's a really good question. Uh, let's find out. pivot correctly. Yeah, it seems like it does. Okay. And then So I kind of feel like I want him to, for this one, take a step forward and then sort of bend and shoot the laser out from one side to the middle. Uh, I don't know how to sort of explain that better, but I think you'll get the idea once I start get going here. So let's see, yeah, let's have him Take one step forward, this one, uh, and kind of crouch a little bit, if that makes sense. So this leg, uh, what am I doing here? So this one's going to extend out more, no, not on that pivot, just right there like this, uh, that's too much, and then flatten out here. But it's got to line up on that line. Okay. 
Okay. I think I may need to bend. What needs more bending? I think these two and these two. That's looking pretty good. No, I wanted to bend even more than that actually. So leg up a bit. Not on pivot though. start really low. Now to get him into that pose, it's going to be a little bit of editing here. Because first of all, I want that back foot to stay put, which means I'm going to have to move it back to here. That might actually be the most of it though. Oops. Sorry, sorry. Move that up there. That's interesting how it still ducks down. I think that's because of these keys. So if I delete these as keys, I think that'll actually fix that problem. And I won't have to uh, worry about that. Or not. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so I do need those keys. Oh yeah, because that's handling the rotation. So yeah, of course you need those keys. Hmm. Okay, then I'll just have to manually keep the foot in place just like I did on the walk cycle. 
so this will be fun. So like right about halfway, maybe here, what I'm gonna do is just bend these bones so that that foot comes back up in place. Ah, it's kind of being tricky because it's pivoting too much. That's the problem. There we go, just that one maybe. And I'll probably have to adjust it with other bones. So like, pull this one back, that one back, pull this one forward, pull this one forward, pull this one more forward, pull this one less back, then straighten this out. Yeah, something like that and just create keys for those bones that I used, maybe one extra just to make sure. And so then in theory, see his foot kind of stay in place now, but it's still moving a little bit. So I can fix that also by just rotating this one down. to come up a little bit on this one so it's just right here that feels about right now I want to keep that other foot from clipping so that he's kind of actually picking it up more so I'm going to do that by this one. Oops, not that. step done before his head comes all the way down so I'm gonna copy all these and move that keyframe back for that foot or that whole leg rather so maybe like right could even move that back a bit Not that far. Maybe like there. And then move it here. Oh. Why did I do that? Oh, did I not copy it? Copy. Oh, uh, it doesn't wind up in the same place though. <sighs> hmm. Well, yeah, because the other leg's not in the same place. Okay, so what I'll have to do then instead is... Uh, I have to do it manually. So I'll have to... on this frame... just move it into position, basically. Thank you. 
almost. Right about there, okay. So now, put this whole leg keyed there. And it's gonna bounce a little. Because, of course, it is. Darth Hoian says, I gotta get some stuff done, but I'll catch you later. Or catch you next time, see you later. No worries. See you, Darth Hoian. Thanks for tuning in. I'll start a little earlier tomorrow. And selected bones. Okay, so still got that bounce. Let me do. Can I fix that by duplicating this? No, no, because <laughs> it's so much rotation is happening with those other bones, so you just gotta fix it. That's the weirdness of this rig. But it doesn't need to be perfect, it'll probably look okay, even if it's a little bouncy. That's not too bad. So now we have it so that he's stepping and he continues bending a little while after he's stepped. And I'm gonna exaggerate that bend for a few more frames here. Just with this bone right here that bends the head down. the same time or maybe not maybe just like one frame out uh, it's not really enough though this is 30 frames per second so this is gonna go fast it's like that okay in fact let's already stretch that out a little oops not from there bring that out to 20 frames. It's not quite, that's a little slow. Maybe like right there. Mm, it's still kind of slow. 
Maybe I won't stretch it out. Let me see. Where was it? Was it like this? That's too fast. So 15 frames. Okay, so I was way behind. I went all the way to 20 frames. I should probably just go to like 15. That'll probably be good. doesn't feel right. Like, I almost want this part to be slower, I think. Yeah, I guess let me try to stretch it more. So he gets to here. What is this frame? This is nothing. That might have been why I was reading that. Weird. Oops. Stretch that out. whole thing to curl a little bit more so that means I'm gonna have to play with these leg parts more which is gonna be kind of annoying okay. so oh especially if I want them to stay in the same place that's gonna be a nightmare Ooh. yeah yeah it'll be worth it though it'll look cool so let's get that and that Let's just rotate these a bit. right here okay okay easy enough let's rotate this Ooh. go to that pivot yeah, that's too much I might have to pull it back anyway okay Uh. 
<laughs> that's not good. Oh, look at that. Oh, boy. That's going to take some fixing. Okay. So it goes like that, and then we're going to have him... Yeah, for starters, let's do this foot. It's going to come up a bit. key this so that that won't happen. What? Why is that messing up now? Jeez. Come on. fix that in a minute, but first, wait, no, something's wrong. Didn't I have him lower than that? Frick, I just screwed this up. Oh, no, no, yeah, that's right, that's right, I had it there, and then that was what the next one was going to be. Okay, so I copied that pose. <laughs> this is annoying. Okay, so this goes down. I'll fix that little overlap in a second. Um, what I need to do first is just key these so that each one is a whole character frame. And then I can have this connected and reconnected. think. Did it come back? Oh, okay. OBS just disconnected and reconnected. I don't know why it does that sometimes, but it does. Okay, so let's see. Whole character. Okay, so now that's a whole character frame, and the other ones are too. It doesn't have that problem. Now I just have to fix this stupid bouncing leg thing. So... I think actually these are just extra keyframes now, so can I delete those and will that fix it? Yeah, almost. Was that even the right place? He sure takes his time putting his foot down there, I'm not sure why. Let's change the interpolation, or the uh, easing on this, to ease in. Yeah, not sure why it's doing that. Oh, I know why, because that was where I had the foot coming and being put down early. That's what those keyframes were, but they weren't working anymore. It's always something, something fun you gotta fix. <laughs> Okay, so let's do a whole character keyframe. Now it comes down there. Oh, and then it comes back up. I don't like it. Okay, so let's do... I have no idea why it does that. Even this one. Make sound effects while you animate, it helps. Don't question it. 
Okay, and let's bring this one back up a bit. For some reason it just falls out of alignment, the whole character. That's not too bad, it bounces a little bit. If I really wanted to, I could just, you know, slightly. So now, in terms of pacing, I want him to take the step, and then curl up, maybe even have a little point of uh, contrast before the curl, where he curls back a bit, that same kind of idea. That might be necessary, because right now it doesn't quite sell it. That, and then the curl. So that, when he steps there. Pull these out. Let me save this, by the way. And then let me see if I can get away with just doing it with this bone so I don't have to uncurl the legs more. Oh, wait, let me move forward to like the halfway point. Ooh, that shouldn't change. I meant with all the bones. There we go. And then. I don't think that's gonna work. I think I gotta uncurl the legs too. We'll see. Let's see how it looks. So he goes down, takes a step, pulls back, curls further. It almost works. I gotta uncurl the legs a little bit though. Man, I wonder if there's a way. It's gotta happen. It's just so annoying. This rig doesn't work right for this sort of thing. Okay, so let me do not like that. Let me do where are we getting the curve? These three. These three. So let's do just like that much. Probably. I mean, let's select that, let's get rid of that. Create a pivot. Um. And then, what was the point? It was right there, so. It's even, it's even clipping a little. Okay, let's hit that, and then we'll pivot everything back into place. on that, and that's still underneath, hit V, and yeah, it's got to curl quite a bit to reach that. No, 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 no. 
to. It doesn't need to curl quite that much. Shoot, that doesn't look right. Step. Curl. Hmm. Step. I think it's because the curl is supposed to be the bounce back because then it's going to move forward. Let me save this and let me save a copy where I delete that part. funny because this is the one I thought would be easy <laughs> and I'm kind of making it more complicated down and then at some point he's going to yeah how am I gonna do that exactly so like here
Oh, I think I see. I could go down like this. And then make that the keyframe. And then get rid of this keyframe. And then just have them start coming forward. Oh, that's going to be a complicated movement. Unless I just do it like this. But I know that's sort of a cheap way to do it. What am I doing? <laughs> I got confused. All right, let me see. I know I have to get this to line up here. And I want this to keep a relatively nice curve where it's not like a little janky looking. Something like that. Yeah, where it's like moving in concert with that. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted. Oh, I know what I was trying to do. That's not what I was trying to do. I know exactly what I was trying to do. When it gets to here, It should have kept up higher then for that though. No, I think it's fine like that then. Okay, let's see. And then it'll stop. Okay, let's try to animate the laser and see what it actually looks like then. And see if that works, because I think my other idea that I have in my head now might be better the thing that I was trying to get to there. So the laser will start on 22. So on one, what I'm gonna do is just shrink it all the way down, if it'll let me. Okay, and then on 22, that's when it starts emitting.
Oh, shoot. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I have to duplicate this keyframe. Put it at 21. Maybe move this one to 23. And then it's like it shoots out. And with each frame, it'll get longer. So it keeps hitting the ground. So it'll be something like, does that actually reach on every frame if that interpolates correctly? More or less. Yeah, I want that to be a little faster. This section. Oh, uh, this too. Something faster, a little more snappy for that part. Let's see if that works. Even the retraction of it should be more instant. Maybe just one frame. It's 30 frames a second, though. I mean, that's barely anything. All right, let's see. Just uh,
That should be decent. I may redo this one to try a different idea where the head stays higher in general. Yeah, I'm not loving that one. I think I have a better idea where like, maybe he'll get up taller and then the laser will look cooler because if he stretches himself up taller first and just rotates from more just the head, then I think the laser will expand more and that'll look way cooler. I had the idea to make him go low to the ground first, but it, I think I over exaggerated it and it doesn't really look good. So this one I think I'm going to redo, but it was a good try. It was a good start anyway. And it's not terrible, but it's just not exactly what I wanted. Okay, so no big deal. I'll probably redo that one either sometime during the day tomorrow or maybe even on this next stream, but I'll probably wind up doing it in during the day tomorrow. Alrighty, well, it's been two hours now, so I think I'm going to call it a night for the stream and uh, get some rest, get ready for tomorrow. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I had a brain fart. I was going to say something and it totally left my mind. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. And uh, thanks as always for your support. It's cool to see you guys in the chat and, and answer questions and and joke around and stuff so thanks again and I'll see you tomorrow probably gonna stream much earlier probably around 738 I'm gonna aim for 730 all right see you guys bye bye